Hello everyone, Dan Hurt with Dan Hurt Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I have today the high banker. I am with the family. We've got Dane over here, Alex, and Evan is playing in the creek somewhere over there. We are at the Goncola Copper Mine. This place is 120 years old. It started back in 1899. Now this historically was a copper mine, although it did have gold as well. So we are here at the old mill site where they have piles of old crush on the ground. We have the high banker and we're gonna see what is in that crush they left behind. We have no idea. Wish us luck. Now I have the high banker here set up right on top of the old crush pile. And I'm gonna take some really close up shots of that so you can see what the crush looks like. And we're just going to, once we get it fired up, just shovel through, you know, half a yard of this crush to see what it holds. Now I know there's people that are gonna say, hey, the old timers left it on the ground, it has nothing in it. Well, that is not necessarily true. These old mines actually left a lot on the ground of the unprocessed material that still had really good values of whatever they were looking for in them. And the mines back then did not really worry too much about the unprocessed ores. They left lots of unprocessed ores around. The processed ores they kept because those were high grade. This stuff here, they left piles and piles of this at these old mines. Now we don't know what we're gonna find in this. We're hoping down in this stuff that we do find some pieces of gold, because there is gold content here. I'm really hoping for some native copper. I'd love to find some native copper. And they also processed a lot of molybdenum from this mine. So it's possible we'll find some mol molybdenum crystals. They're not really worth anything, but they're really neat to find. What do you think, Alex? It's raining. It's starting to rain again, lovely. Now, luckily, right beside the mine site, we have a beautiful little creek that in the spring runs enough water to pump from. We got the Honda inch and a half pump ready to go to feed the high banker. We got the intake and a little bit of a recess. Just have to prime the pump and we're ready to go. Evan is priming the pump for me. Good job, Evan. Now, here's a nice close up of some of the ore crush here. This is a little bit different than other mine sites I've worked in the past in that the ore here is not a massive sulfide. It doesn't have much iron sulfide in it, very, very little. It's mostly an oxide here. It's actually pyroxene and magnetite ore though with lots of copper. You can see the azurite, the green staining on some of these rocks. That's the copper coming through. You can see on some of them a little bit of the pyrites, the iron pyrites, but it's such a small amount that the whole pile is not rusted like we usually see at these old mine sites. And here we go. In fact, you don't see much rust at all in these piles because most of the material here is already an oxide, not a sulfide. A sulfide is what rusts and turns into that nasty orange rusty look that you see at these old mine sites. And we're hoping that if we process enough of this gravel here, we will also find some gold that has been weathered out of this ore and possibly some native copper as well. But instead of looking at ore samples, let's get digging. And we have water. The matting and stuff I have at the top there, it doesn't actually catch gold. That's just there to keep rushes as we throw the dirt in, keep it from rushing down too fast. Just slows it down a bit. Goes through a 3 8 grizzly, over gold owl mats, and then over dream mat. I think we're ready for our first shovel full as the rain starts. There we go. Excellent. My damper up front needs adjusting, but I'll get that in a second. Looks to be nice and level. And we're going down into the old ore mill foundation, which will keep it up from getting back to the river. Here in BC, we're not allowed to discharge our water back into the creeks and rivers, so it has to go just onto the ground and soak in. This old foundation is going to be a perfect spot for us to do that. Back when this was a mine, they actually crushed their ore here, and this is the foundation of the big crusher that they had. They said 90 yard per hour crusher. Or was it 90 yards per day? I can't remember. Oh, these two are workhorses. Look at them go. Oh, 
where the third backup but The third backup? Yeah, because it's social distancing. Social distancing, I can't have Mike and Pete. I can't have uh, Mike and Bryson. So I have my family, which are the best team outgoing. My family is worried about my bad heart, so they've offered to do all the digging for me today. Bonus. <laughs> Maybe I can milk this bad heart. Oh, just another type of rock down there. So I told them not to worry about overloading the sluice. We can go pretty much as fast as they want here, especially with this material. So they're going hardcore at digging right now. It is washing very nicely. The rocks are coming out nice and clean. You can sort of see the amount of quartz that's crushed in here. They say that the gold is in the quartz. They say the copper is in the pyroxene magnetite mix. Though I have a feeling that the gold is kind of mixed in with everything, probably at a molecular level. So there might not be much, if any, free milled here. We will see once the high banker is done. So I found all this, look, all three of those steps. Some sort of sulfide by the looks of it, yeah. This one's green if you clear it. If you get this right, oh yeah. Hopefully we find things like that that are really, really heavy that stay in the sluice because those could be made of copper. How you doing, Dane? I'm doing all right. How you doing, Alex? Great. How you doing, Evan? Great. Oh my goodness, guys. You just paused their shoveling for a second so we can have a look at the map. They seem to be processing nicely. We're pushing it pretty hard though. We're shoveling in pretty fast. But that's okay. That means we'll go through more ore today. I see something shiny. I doubt it's gold, but maybe. Hey, keep going. The rain is getting a bit heavier and that mountain over there seems to be just sucked right in and raining hard. So uh, we may get dumped on here. Luckily we have lots of time. If we have to go hide in the truck, we can. Blue rock, let's have a look. Alex found a piece of azure right here, the, so that's copper ore, copper oxide that's uh, blue. Unfortunately, uh, it fell into the mix and we couldn't find it again. Good sign that we got copper here. There is quite a bit of rust down deeper in here, so we do have some iron sulfides rusting out. Now it seems to be down into very fine crush, which is probably better than the coarse crush. Awesome. So they're down into lots of these little clumps of green malachite. This is a form of copper oxide. It can come from a copper sulfide oxidizing or it can come from native copper oxidizing. So we're hoping at the center of some of these clumps, we actually find some native copper. The chances are it's gonna be a copper sulfide, like a calcopyrite at the center doing this. But we can hope. So I managed to break it open. It was definitely copper sulfide that uh, oxidized away, not made of copper. Don't see any actual raw copper inside there. But that's just that one piece. Okay, it's time to shut off the pump. Dana's gonna run and do that. We'll have a quick look before she does. We won't worry about the top at all right now. Let's get some of these rocks through. Oh yeah, the dream mats. Working like a dream. I'm very interested to see if there's anything here. Oh, you can see the riffles are absolutely full of pyrite. So Alex found another piece of uh, the green here and I managed to break it open and you can actually see the sulfide inside. So it's definitely copper sulfide that is oxidizing out of this ore at the moment. And the sun has come out. The rain is gone. The sun has come. The boys are playing on the old foundation. Don't hurt yourselves. And it's time to clean out. I'm gonna clean out the dream mats first, then the gold owl mats. And I think I'm gonna pan in a tub to keep all this stuff. Yeah, that's a good call. So here's the gold owl mats and the every single riffle is just packed with pyrite. Absolutely packed. Some of it very shiny too. Down into the dream mat. Some of these pieces of pirate are just absolutely glowing gold in color. Let's hope they are actually gold. I really hope we find a little bit of gold here to make this interesting. But really, I'm gonna keep all the cons we get out of here because this is gonna make for an amazing smelt. I might actually smelt a chunk of copper because we have so much 
high graded copper ore here. Pyrite everywhere. Look at the chunks, chunks of pyrite. Two big pieces of copper pyrite. Calco pyrite in that one dream mat cell. You can really see the copper line going through that rock. Very carefully, take the dream mat out. I'm gonna keep all the cons here in my tub. So if I actually accidentally dump some out, it's not a big deal. But nope, I got it all in my pan. Cleaned nicely, it's all in my pan. This would be unbelievably hard to pan properly. So I'm just gonna go quick to see what's in the bottom. But this pan is almost all copper pyrite and magnetite. The ore here is high, high, high in magnetite. Now this is the bottom mat as well. So hopefully, you know, ideally, there wouldn't be any gold in this because the top mats would have caught it already. Very shiny, very, very shiny copper pyrites in there. So I see one piece of lead, there's an old bullet. There's an old bullet right there. But I don't see any chunks of native copper, nor do I see any gold. Hmm, no gold. Lots and lots of copper pyrite. Calco pyrite. And the fact that I don't see even specks of gold here tells me this might not have any free mill gold in it. Though, we will make that determination when we do the top mats. So here's a real close-up of that ore that came out, the concentrates. It is mostly magnetite and calcopyrite, which is the copper sulfide. You'll notice that a lot of the sulfides there are rusted, so there's probably some iron pyrite as well in there. Look at that cube, point of a cube sticking out beautifully. So the two different pyrites, but being that this is a copper mine, you know that the the quantity of copper is going to be very high in this. Okay, here's that pyrite cube I saw earlier. I just pulled it out to see what it looks like. Beautiful pyrite cube. So I don't see any of that typical rounded look you would expect from native copper, but I do see a bunch of these pyrite pieces have taken on that copper tinge as they oxide. I'm fairly positive that's a piece of copper pyrite there. And of course the cubes of pyrite. And there's that one piece of gold that I found in the mix. Though now the sun's out a bit more, I do see a lot of glitters in this magnetite that could be. We'd look at that under the microscope though. Now here's a microscope shot of the material and there's three pieces of the gold. Now this is absolutely tiny gold. This is a microscope. I just want to show you a little trick here. If you do have a digital microscope with an adjustable light, if you turn down the light setting, or oh, that's up. If you turn down the light setting, down and down and down, the gold will always be the last thing visible. And that's because gold is so bright compared to other minerals that when you turn down the light, it's always the last thing you'll see. Let me move over a little bit and show you another spot. Now you see that really bright uh, pyrite crystal in the middle there. Uh, now some of the gold will take on flat and cubic shapes because it grows in amongst pyrite crystals, but to tell that that's a pyrite crystal and not gold, we just turn down the light volume. And what happens to it? It vanishes because it's only bright because it's reflecting light, not because it's inherently a bright material like gold. We have to go quickly run and hide in the truck. A hailstorm came through, but it was only like a five minute hailstorm. You can see it up there in the mountains. It's done. Time to get back at her. Well, there we go. We, re we let this run a little bit longer this time after we put the last shovel hole in to clear it out a bit better. We only ran for about 10 minutes this time just to get some shots for the camera because we did decide there is no or virtually no free mill gold here and we have more than enough cons to do a really good smelt. So we kept it brief this time. I was using the underwater camera down underwater. That must be a big bullet there. Yeah, there's a big bullet. Very interesting. We end up with a lot of copper in this run. Bullets, pellets, fragments, 
lots of copper. This is the dream mat. There's another cube. Maybe I saw one. Maybe I saw one piece of gold go by. Maybe. So we've definitely determined that the Goncola copper mine is just that. It's a copper mine. with the tons and tons of copper ore here. The gold content that shows in the historic files must be tied up in the copper ore. We didn't see any molybdenum chips because those are pretty distinct when you see them. We saw one or two gold flakes, but the vast majority of it was definitely copper sulfide. We know it's copper sulfide, not iron sulfide because there isn't real big rust stains around here. Oh, there is both. We only did one big run and then one small run after that, but that did give us enough information to know what we're looking at here. I now know I have a real good supply of copper ore if I want to do copper smelt, and this is a fairly large claim in the future. It is possible it would be an economical copper mine if, you know, copper prices went up and the world demand for copper went up, which it's always doing. So I will be holding on to this claim for the future. I really owe a big thanks to my family here for doing all my shoveling today and taking care of sick old dad. Uh, so thanks guys. Hey, no problem. Uh, you know me? <laughs> I really hope you all enjoy our adventures in prospecting. If you do, leave us that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already and you like what you saw, consider subscribing. I have hundreds of more videos on YouTube. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook. And until the next one, everyone, bye.